Whatever the earth may temporarily offer us as human beings, one thing is certain, it is not our permanent home. Regardless of scientific and technological advances, the physical universe as we know it will sometime be unable to sustain life, either reaching a point of maximum entropy or collapsing in upon itself, taking in its course every living creature. Despite the optimistic hopes of some, humankind as we presently understand it has a limited future, perhaps only a few million years. We are, in fact, only visitors to a land that is destined to die. Where, then, is our true home? According to mystics from both East and West, humanity's real abode is neither physical or mental, but wholly spiritual. That is, we are residents of an infinite realm of light and love who have lost sight of our essential nature, mistaking a drop for an ocean, a shack for a kingdom, a stone for a jewel. Sawan Singh, honorifically called the Great Master of Bayas, was from his early childhood irresistibly drawn to seek for something that transcended this veil of blood and tears. Born in a Sikh family, Sawan was brought up with the sacred scriptures of his religion, the Guru Granth Sahib, which is a compilation of mystical poetry written by Sikh gurus and other Indian and Persian mystics, which spoke at length about an inner music and light that lead a soul back to its eternal abode, Sach Khand. Deeply religious, Sawan Singh associated with a number of holy men, whom he questioned about the nature of man's spiritual quest. None of these mystics, however, could satisfy his longing. The turning point in Sawan Singh's life came when he met his spiritual guru, Jaimal Singh, in 1894 in the Murray Hills, and took initiation under him in the path of Surat Shabad Yoga, such was Sawan's readiness that in just over nine years, he became an acknowledged master within the Satmat and Radhaswami tradition. The secret to the practice of Shabad Yoga is not to be detained or led astray by any sights or sounds on the upward journey, but to follow the celestial current to its terminal apex, where all of consciousness has its transcendental source. In a letter to a disciple, Sawan Singh explained the process of meditation. When you sit still, see that the mind is at rest and does not go out unnecessarily and think about other things. When by repetition of the names with attention fixed in the eye focus, you have become unconscious of the body below the eyes, then your attention will catch the sound current. Select the sound resembling the church bell and discard all other sounds. Then slowly your soul will leave the body and collect in the eyes and become strong. Then fix your attention in the biggest star, so much so that you forget everything else except the sound and the star. Then this star will burst and you will see what is within and beyond. After crossing the star, you will have to cross the sun and the moon, which are inner manifestations of light. After crossing the star, the sun and the moon, you will see that form which will never leave you, not even for a moment. Finally, the drop merges in the ocean the wave flows back to the sea, the eye reunites with its source. Sawan Singh established a large spiritual colony on the banks of the Bayas River in the Punjab, where Jaimal Singh had resided since the latter part of the 19th century. Having been a highly placed engineer himself in the military service, Sawan built a number of large buildings at the Dara to house the increasing flux of seekers. The most impressive of these structures, the centerpiece of the Dara, is the satsangar built in the 1930s to hold satsangs and later to hold initiations. Sawan Singh gathered a large following of disciples from around the world, and today his teachings, in one form or another, are followed by millions. He died on April 2nd, 1948, at the age of 90. Nearing the end of his life, Sawan Singh summarized his teachings this way. Whatever your religion or community, go within. Nam is the same for all of the universe. It does not consist of the words of any language, whether Punjabi, Sanskrit, Arabic, or Persian. In the region of Nam, there is no language and therefore no book of religion, nor can it be described by any known language. It is an inexpressible story, an unstruck sound.